John chapter 7, verse 14. This is John chapter 7, verse 14. Baby had to make some lemonade when I first met her. I mean, not lemonade, Kool Aid when I first met her. Pulled leg. She couldn't make no. She couldn't make no Kool Aid when I first met her. Of course not. It wasn't her fault though. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't her fault. But you know what I'm saying? I told her to make some Kool Aid. She made that Kool Aid way better than me now. My sister in law used to make some. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. She put together some Kool Aid now. Real good Kool Aid. Kalindi, back in high school, she could make some Kool Aid. Bro. That thing used to be crap. That's a skill. You can make some Kool Aid. You can get far in life. Kendra. Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. Some bomb Kool-Aid is unappreciated. <laughs> though. Like, it's, not everybody can make some bomb Kool-Aid. You can get that mixture just right with the yeah. sugar in it. Man. Now that's some good stuff. <laughs> Woo! Kool-Aid's where it's at. Danny over there bougie because she eating all healthy and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kool-Aid. Uh, that's all sugar. Yeah. And antioxidants. And that's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> Diabetes or two rolling around the you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Much Kool Aid I drink. <laughs> we had this John chapter 14, John chapter uh, 7. It's John chapter 7, verse 14. Now, about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Right? So they marveled. That means they're shocked. They're shocked. They're like, how in the world he know letters? Talking about the scripture, right? How in the world he know the book? And he never learned. Like he never, he had, we don't know of him having any formal training in the book, right? We understand that to be not true though, right? Remember uh, back when he is, when he is young, uh, his parents, Mary and John, Mary and Joseph, yeah. they went to, uh, they went to Passover. And then after Passover, you know, our law tell us three times a year, every male has to show up. So Joseph had to be there. Mary and the kids went along. And then after that, you know what I'm saying, they was on the way back and they left Yahushua. And the book teller Yahushua was sitting at the, 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 the feet of the doctors. And when doctors, the, the meaning of the word doctor is a teacher. So he's sitting at the feet of the te- teachers and they is learning and asking questions. You know what I'm saying? So we knew, we knew at that point, you know what I'm saying, that, that he was getting the understanding of the book at that point. But these people don't know that. Right? So they're looking at like, Look at this man, how he know the scriptures, and he's never learned. Well, the truth is, he has learned. He just didn't learn in a way. He's just a lot quicker than a lot of y'all, right? A lot quicker than a lot of them, you know what I'm saying? A lot of these people that run their mouth, he's like, how he learn? You know what I'm saying? Well, he learned when he is a baby. 
That's what he did. He devoted all his time to it. He wasn't out there playing around like all these other kids. He was out there trying to, trying to get that word in him. All right? Keep going. And Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Uh -huh. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. All right, so that's a key for us. How uh, DJ Khaled said, keys. You know what I'm saying? A key. All right? This is for something for us that we can look into and we can say, this is how it works. If we do it, we understand it. All right? A lot of people will look at you and be like, well, how do you know what Philip said? Like, how do you know? I mean, it's a lot of people. How do you know a Philip? I ain't even tell them that my doctrine ain't my doctrine. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you do the will of the Father, you know what I'm saying is good or is bad. Is it of God or is it of me? You will know. Right? The only reason people don't know is because they just don't know the book. Right? It could be anything. For them, as far as from where they're looking at it, it literally could be anything. Right? That's why they tell you, you never know what religion is right. You never know because they really don't know. They have no idea. How they supposed to know? They never looked into none of them, right? So from them, it really could be any of them. But when you once you look into some stuff, it's like, well, no, it can't be any of them. This is the one, right? This is what it is. This is the truth. But it just comes from knowing it. And the only way you're going to know it is that you do it, right? Most of God going to give you a little bit, then you got to obey that little bit that he gave you. And he's going to give you a little bit more, you got to obey that little bit more you get. You know what I'm saying? You get a little bit, and then you start doing what you want to do with it, opening up your own darn church, you know what I'm saying? Starting up your own Hebrew camp, doing all this other stuff these other wild folks do. Then you just make a darn mess. You know what I'm saying? Then you end up, you see these people that end up following the lie, and they obey a lie fashion, and they obey the truth. You know what I'm saying? Got these people leaving their darn wives over some stuff, you know what I'm saying? Got a, got a good, solid wife, and they tell you your wife got German in her, so she can't, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you know what I'm saying? She's a, she's a gen, her daddy was a her daddy was a Gentile. She had black, but her daddy was a Gentile, so you, you can't do it. I see all this stuff on Facebook. I'm like, got these people leaving their good wives. I'm like, what's wrong with y'all? You know what I'm saying? Comparing Germans to Canaan. You know what I'm saying? No, the books say, the books say that we not supposed to give into marriage. It was like, you do know that I was talking about Amorites, right? That was it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You do, you do know. You, you, did, you did read right about that when they said the Amorites. And then right? he did read in the law when he said, if you take over a country and you choose to wife one of the servants. Yeah, it said, now be clear, that thing said, what type of country? A far away country. He said, you can't, you take away that thing far, so let's see, we look at the map, I ain't got my map up here no more, but if we look at the map, Israel right here, and Germany way over here, that thing far away. Far away. You ain't, let me tell you, how long is it going to take you to get to Germany? On foot. <laughs> That's going to be a long trail. That's a far away country. But you let these people tell it. I mean, not these Gentile. For them, Gentile, you know what Gentile mean? Everybody. White. <laughs> that was not mean to them. They said Gentile. You ain't going to never see them get a nice, just dreadlocked up African. Just walk up to him. You ain't going to never call him a Gentile. He a Gentile. I'll call him one for sure. He a Gentile. That thing easy. What you mean? These people use Gentile against white folks. And then they're going to call them Mexican. They're going to call these Mexican. They're going to be like, yeah, the Mexican, that's our brother. That's Ephraim. You know what I'm saying? They, they, be, they, got this, they got this weird concoction about all these different people. Everybody is Hebrew except for white people. I was like, man, y'all got to stop this stuff. That thing crazy. Y'all got to stop it. You just got to get you got to get your own feeling. This stuff, what we do, it can't have feelings involved with it. You just got to get your feelings out of it. I feel a certain way about a person. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Just like last week, I was talking about you know what I'm saying? Talking about how, you know, I don't know if it was last week, but one of these weeks, we were talking about praying, and we were just talking about, you know what I'm saying, sometimes you got to front to everybody else, right? Then to the most high God, you just be honest with them, right? And when I say front, I'm not saying front as in, you know, show yourself to be something that you're not. I'm saying don't do what your passion tells you to do. Your passion will tell you, knock him out, right? Your passion, your passion going to tell you, I'm about to cuss my teacher out. I'm about to cuss my boss out. Right? That's what your passion tells you. You got to be like, no, that's not what God tells me. God tells me, treat, that's my master, my boss. Right? We say boss. You, you say master. You be like, no, nah, I ain't calling nobody my master. You, you call him boss. It's the same thing, right? It's just a different semantic. But that, that's equivalent. When the book talks about treat your master with due respect. Right? It's the same thing. It's treat your boss with due respect. It's the same exact thing. You talk to your boss, you treat him with respect. You know what I'm saying? You look at him, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, this is what I'm doing. Now, on the inside, you know how you feel. I want to I wanna cuss him out. I want to do this. But that's a sin for me. 
So with that, I keep in. And when I talk to God, I'll be like, listen, let me tell you everything I want to do to this man. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you everything I want to say to this woman. Right? It's important for us. So that's what I mean when you say front. You, you know, we put up, it's important for us. It's not being fake. That's how the world will call that fake. That's what they call it. They call that stuff fake. And we don't even got to talk about all the stuff that they do. But they'll call that fake <laughs> because I feel a certain way and I don't act on it. For them, that's fake. Right? They would encourage us to act on all of our feelings. And we've all done that in our lifetime. And how far did that get? Just have us apologizing the next week. Right? Lashing and reacting on emotion. We can't do that. All of our stuff had to be controlled. We had to be, a, you know what I'm saying? Mm, mm, think about it. Cool. Wolf forward. Right? Otherwise, we put ourselves in a position where we're reacting without really thinking about what the Most High God has for us. What the Most High God is trying to do to us. Right? And then when we pray, that's when we handle it. When we pray, get that thing on out. You know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Most I got to deal with it. That's what he's here for. All right? But a lot of, a lot of times, we don't have, we don't have that, that, that mindset. You know what I'm saying? It all comes with obedience to the book. You submit yourself to the book. Whatever you do, know. It's not out there for us to know everything on day one. It's just not going to happen. It's not realistic. But we just got to have the same attitude that uh, the Ethiopian eunuch had. You know what I'm saying? Just teach me. You know what I'm saying? Show me what it is. It was a uh, Hebrew. It's a Hebrew girl. Every now and again, she she posts some stuff, and um, uh, she actually come now. Here, I invite her to come. I don't think she's gonna come. We'll see though. Um, but uh, she uh, she posts stuff. Uh, she posted. What did she post? She said she is like I don't need an elder, right? And a lot of people in our Hebrew Hebrew community that's what they call them the elders. In the book, when they call say elder, that's like how we would consider a pastor. She was like, I don't need no specific elder to teach me anything, this, that, and the other, da, da, da. Basically, she's like, these Christians lied to us. I'm not about to get into one of these Hebrew camps and have them lying to me and following no man. I'll find God on my own. And so I'm looking at, you know, I always like to look at their comments, just kind of see what type of people is going to give them advice. You want know, the people that somebody's going to give her sound advice, like, mm, be careful, sis, this, that, and other, or are they just going to tell her whatever? So you got a lot of people doing the clapping hand emojis, the 100 percent emoji. There's a whole bunch of stupid emojis saying that she right. You know what I'm saying? And you got one dude that make a post and he's like, "That's right, sis." And he quoted some Bible. I was like, "Wait, bro!" I was like, "Give her some. Somebody give her Bible." So there's this one dude. He gave her Bible. You know what I'm saying? He quoted. He's like, "That's right, sis." And he said, "You know what I'm saying?" It was that Bible verse? Uh, I think it was what was that John when it say, um, uh, "The Comforter will come and he'll lead you to all truth" or something like that. Um, so he posted that one. And so, I was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you use that. That's a true Bible verse. But you use it to confirm what she's saying. And that's not what it looked like. Like, we have to understand that when God works, he's going to take us from one place to another place. But when he does that, a man is involved. Right? He's going to take you from a, he's going to take you, the spirit is going to come. And the spirit is going to lead you to a man to teach you. Right? And we have to have an attitude. When that happens, we have to have the attitude of teaching. So then we learn a little bit, and then we move forward, right? And when I say a man, that don't mean it's Philip. That don't mean it's T. That don't mean nothing. It just means that it's going to be a man of God. If the Spirit is leading you, it's going to take you to a man of God. Now, if Philip and T are down the street, I don't think it makes sense that the Spirit of the Most High God is going to lead you all the way to Atlanta, right? It's just like, it's just some stuff is just not practical, but that's what people want to do. Right? People just, you know, they, they go out and they jump for the far off and do all this stuff and it doesn't it doesn't really make sense. Right? We just have to rein it in. Calm down. Learn before we start jumping out the window, doing too much, saying too much, posting too much, leading people a wrong way, doing all this stuff. You gotta relax. Bring it all in. Once we bring it all in, then we can get to what y'all wish you were talking about right here. Right? How in the world did he learn that? Oh, I'll tell you, this doctrine ain't mine. Right? It's the one who sent me. And if you do what he say, you will know what I'm saying a lie or not. Right? That's all you got to do. Only reason a lot of people think it's a lie, because they ain't doing what he say in the first place. If you were doing what he said, you will be able to be like, you know what? That's the truth there. That's book. Right? Let's pick up where we left off. Remember last, last time we, uh, we was in Numbers. Numbers chapter 13. We finished him off. Numbers was telling us about... Uh, about uh, our brother and that went up and they went to scope out the land of Canaan. Remember, we about the most high God, he promised us. He promised, he said, y'all can have Canaan. Who did he promise it to first? Abraham. He promised it to Abraham. He told Abraham, you know what I'm saying, what you want? 
Yeah, go ahead and look out there. You know what I'm saying? Abraham looked out there and he told him to, you know what I'm saying, walk the border of the land. He said, all oh, this is about to be yours. All right? That was the land of Canaan that he was in. All right? Then after that, you know what I'm saying, we get down all the way to Moses. And Moses is getting us there. We on the border. We sent out 12 spies to go out and scope out the land. All right? A leader from each of our tribes. Remember, we got 12 tribes. Not including Levi. Levi. All right? So we went out there, scoped it out, and they came back. You know what I'm saying? And 10 of the 12, they came back with a bad report. It's like, no, 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 no. It's nice over there. Milk and honey for sure. But, man, these some big old folks over there. There's some tall jokers over there. All right? They don't mess around and try to get up. I don't think we can beat them. All right? Then Caleb was like, man, we already got this thing in the bag. Caleb, Caleb, like, most high God gave it to us. I said, we go up right now. All right? Caleb was about it. As big as they were, Caleb was like, man, let's get it. Joshua was too, right? So the Most High God, he, you know what I'm saying, he just kind of sitting back scoping this whole thing out. But the people got scared, right? They came back with the evil report, basically like, man, we're not going to be able to do it. Some big people over there. The land is nice now. But man, that land is messing around. Eat us up, right? So the people, we're going to read about now how the people got scared. And then we're going to read Most High God the reaction to the, to the evil report. All right, so this is uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. Number chapter 14, verse 1. <clears throat> and all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation and said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt. <laughs> Look at them. They looking like, oh, they heard all the bad news. They like, Oh, it's giants over there. Can you remember? They said these folks is like grasshoppers. I mean, we like grasshoppers in their sight. But if you compare us to them, we like grasshoppers. You got these people that's eight, nine feet tall. You know what I'm saying? Looking at them, they warrior people. They looking like, man, we can't fight these people. So they came back and tell all the people that. Remember, it's 12 of them. They come back and they give a report to all the people. They give all the people that. You think the people going to be like, oh, yeah, let's fight now? They like, they like, oh man. So now they freaking out. They like, man, what, what to God? Like, I wish that, I wish God would send us back, right? We might as well have died in Egypt, is what they saying. Y'all remember we were crying when we was in Egypt, though, right? In Egypt we were crying. Then we got here, and it's like, oh, we might for this, we might as well. Why we do all this traveling? I've been darn hungry, haven't had fish, haven't had no darn meat in a long time. I've been eating this. Bread, or this bread, this what? What is this? What is it? Manna. You know, I've been eating this manna and this thing like coriander seed. And I've been eating this thing for months, over years. I've been doing all this just to go up a darn giant who's going to kick my butt. And oh, we might as well just, we should have just died in Egypt. Right? Watch what they say. Or oh, would God we had died in this wilderness? Right? He's like, well, you know what I'm saying? At least kill us in the wilderness. We could have just died in the wilderness. We'd have been good. All right, let's see. And wherefore has the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Right? He's like, why? Why did the Most High God bring us all the way to this land just so our wives and our children to mess around get killed? We're going to lose this war. We're going up against people that's more than us and they're stronger than us and they're bigger than us. Right? We have kids out here and children out here. They gonna mess around and take our people. He is like, man, we might as well just died in Egypt. We should have just died in the wilderness. Let's see. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. All right? They start talking, talking to one of these like, you know what, let's just go on back. Let's, maybe Pharaoh will take us back. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we can strike a little deal with him. Let's just head on back to Egypt. Right? For, for them, that was a logical decision. Right? For them, what they were looking at, they were looking like, listen, we know we can't win this war if we try to we try to take the land. That thing ain't even that's not even a practical decision no more. So now our choices is stay in this wilderness where we don't have nothing to eat, or go back to Egypt where I mean conditions are not the best, but at least it's better than where we are right now. Right? So that was a practical decision for them. They were sitting there, okay, let's go back. So they start choosing out a captain. Alright, they want to know who gonna lead us back. Is it gonna be you? You know what I'm saying? Is it gonna be you? Is it gonna be you? Right? 
Whole time they forget how it was in Egypt. All right? Whole time they forget that they were crying out. They busted crying out. Right? A lot of times we like we can look at this and we can say, oh, stupid Israelites. God just split the seas for you so you know God will take care of you and all that, right? But we have to be able to look further than that. Do we not do the same type of stuff? Right? Do we not all have like some feeling at some point in our life that we prayed and God answered our prayer? Right? We prayed, most high God looked out, he answered our prayer, and we felt it. We was like, you know what? Thank you, God. Right? Exactly what I wanted to happen, happened. Thank you, God. And then we come again, hit another situation, we pray, and it seemed like it's not happening, and then we freak out. And we get talking about, oh, well, you know, I kind of want to, you know, go back to, I, you know, if I do this, I'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? I can just claim a couple extra kids on my taxes this time. You know what I'm saying? I'll be good. You know what I'm saying? I just close the gap that I got. You know what I'm saying? All I got to do is just steal a little bit of time from my job right now. Right? Doing some of the other, the foolishness that we used to do. I mean, let me just hit this blunt one time. It just make me feel good. I mean, I'm just going through it like right now, though. Right? Have we not had the same type of feeling like God answered our prayer? We know God real at that point. Did we go up against some harsh? I mean, like, eh. I mean, maybe not, though. Right? That's the same thing that they're going through. If you put it in that perspective, you can understand. It's like, yeah, I knew God was real when he split the Red Sea. Okay, but now we're going up against giants. We're God at now. Okay, let's go back to Egypt. Same thing as us, going back to our old life. Just because we go up against some hardship, we don't see the way out, right? We don't see exactly how we're going to get out of it, but you know what we're going to do? Oh, we'll figure something out. We used to do it this way. They used to do it a certain way, too, but back in Egypt, right? Sometimes we just got to understand the way, the way we think it ain't the way God thinking, right? It ain't like he answering, right? Sometimes sometimes we pray and that thing feel instant. I know that thing felt that way for me. Some, for some of y'all, you know what I'm saying? I'm praying and some things happen to y'all. I'm like, Praise the most high God. The other times I pray and it's like, man, why I feel like God ain't moving? Right? It thing just don't feel like, you know what I'm saying? It just don't feel like he's moving at this point. But all the way got to be reminded, it's like, you know what? That thing didn't feel like it was moving for a lot of people in the book. How long we is in Egypt? Grab, uh, grab Exodus for me. Exodus chapter 3. Before you grab that, uh, no, no, no. Grab Exodus chapter 3 first, then grab Genesis 15. Most High God is looking for consistency. If they were consistent, you know what they would have did? They would have saw that scary stuff and they would have went back to God and go, all right, God, what do we do now? Right? That's all we got to do is, okay, what are we going to do now? We've been here before, God. What are we going to do now? Do Moses got to hold his hands up? Right? Do we need Aaron and her to stand on each side of Moses? To hold his hands up so we can win this battle? Do another sea got to get split? What's the plan? Right? But they forget all that. They get too caught up in what they got going on and what they can't see. That's what we have to learn, though. That's why, that's why the book is here. They didn't have nothing to learn from. They didn't have no example. They couldn't, they couldn't open up no book and be like, oh, this is something people did. We got that. We ain't got that this year. Right? We got every example in the book. We got to look at this and be like, okay, this is why they made these decisions. This is how I avoid making This is uh, Exodus chapter 3. Give me verse, uh, sorry, verse 1. Let's just, let's just read on. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of, the, of a bush. Uh -huh. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Man, he pastor, look, he a Christian pastor, I spent three hours preaching on just that verse. A bush burned, and it was not consumed. They had liked that verse, huh? Let's keep going. We ain't even going to touch it. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Uh -huh. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. 
And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou stand is holy ground. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry. He said, what now? I have heard their cry. He said, I have surely seen the affliction of his people, and I've heard their cry. The Most High God is sitting here telling you, I heard their cry. What are you going to do now? By reason of their taskmaster, taskmasters, for I know their sorrow, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. He said, I heard they cry. Guess what I'm going to do about it? I'm about to deliver them. That's the answer to the prayer right there. These people, when they crying, these people crying out to the Most High this whole time. We crying out to the Most High God. Now grab this. Grab Genesis 15. Let's see how long it took. Right? Most High God got to remind us sometimes. Like, all right, for sure. He ain't on the same time we got. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes that thing work out. Sometimes you just shoot that prayer up and that thing come right back down. Be like, dang, that thing happened. You know what I'm saying? That thing, you get a call like right after and be like, well, that thing just happened. Right? Sometimes that thing just happened. That thing be like, all right, you cool. You rocking. You know what I'm saying? Everything's smooth. You rocking. Like, man, God is good. You praising him. God real as can be in your heart. The other time, man, that thing, that thing just like, it's like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, why this thing? What's going on, God? Are you even real? You know what I'm saying? Is you, are you listening? Do you hear me? Right, that thing's a struggle because ain't nothing happening. It's real tough for you. Right? Same thing they, they, the Israel, same thing our fathers went through. We went through the same thing in the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? We were rocking. That thing was real for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Things happening. We see miracles. Good, good business. All of a sudden, we go up against these giants. It's like, uh, well, you know what I'm saying? We might as well go back to Egypt. Who going to take us back? Let's pick a captain. Who going to take us back to Egypt? Right, this is Genesis chapter 15. Give me verse 13. This is Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. They're going to they gonna afflict them for 400 years. Let's hear about it. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Uh-huh. And thou shalt go by thy go by, go to thy fathers in peace. Thou uh -huh. shalt be buried in a good old age. Uh -huh. But in the fourth generation they shall come here again, for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet full. So now we know what type of time God was on. It's two things He said there: fourth generation they're gonna come here, and the iniquity of the Amorites is not full yet. So now we know. Them being rescued and coming back is dependent on the iniquity of the Amorites, which he told us is going to happen in the fourth generation. And guess how it played out? Right when that fourth generation hit, Moses, like God reached out to Moses. He was like, Moses, uh, I heard they cry. The whole time. No, this whole time I've been listening to him cry. Levi, Amram, Kohath, Moses. Right? This whole time I've been sitting here listening to him cry. I heard the whole time. Now I'm about to do something about it. Right? It's about consistency with us. Right? Sometimes that thing happens, it's rocking. Sometimes that thing, you know what I'm saying, like, eh, I don't know what's happening, God. I don't see nothing moving. Sometimes the most high God ain't going to move. Right? Not the way we want him to move. But no matter what, we got to be consistent. Oh, I wish I knew where that parable was. The old lady, you know what I'm talking about? Well, uh, she was praying and... Went to the judge. Uh, went to the judge. Yeah. No, I don't know where it is. Oh, man. I wish I knew where that was. Grab, uh, let's go back to number. Grab Numbers chapter 14, verse 4. What you got going on, son? Let me see. Uh, Spider-Man? Neighborhood Spider-Man. I'm friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I heard you say it. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return it to Egypt. Uh -huh. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephana, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceedingly good land. 
If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Right. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Right? So J uh, Joseph and uh, Joseph, Joshua and uh, Caleb, they they had the right idea. They trying to everybody trying to convince Moses, Aaron fell out on the ground. Everybody falling out. They trying to convince them like, yo, relax. We can do this. Don't rebel against God by going back. Relax. They trying to tell them. But remember, there's more people that saying you got you got the majority of people that saying no, we can't do this. You got only two people that went out there that saying yeah, we can do it. The other ten like you can't, right? Like there's so much in that right there. It's like that's how it is for us. How many people you got that's telling you the truth? How many people that telling you you can you can actually stop sinning? That thing rare out here. The more, majority of people coming back and they telling you what? That thing is possible. You don't even want to try that self-righteousness, even if you try that self-righteousness. It ain't nothing about what you do. God has to do it in you. Right? You ain't going to never be where you want to be until you stop trying yourself and you just let God. Right? And that's what we be getting. I should just let God. Just show me. I mean, just what's the formula to letting God? What that look like? You know what I'm saying? Like, do I sit on the couch with like a little bit of a lean? You know what I'm saying? And that's how I let God. Like, how do I let God? You know what I'm saying? What do I do differently than what I'm doing right now to let? Am I stopping God right now? Like, am I in God's way? Am I telling God no right now? Like, I didn't know I was. Like, explain that to me. Can't nobody explain it because it's just semantic, just words, empty stuff, vanity. Right? You know what you want to know what letting God is? Obeying his word. That's it. All this stuff is simple. I can answer every question they got. You know what I'm answering with? Obeying his word. That day clean everything up, but that day that make a tough conversation at that point. Because now you gotta deal with what if I don't obey it? You don't obey, you're going to hell. No, no, brother. See, God, no, God. See, we God's children. If your son didn't do what you say, are you gonna send your son to hell? I ain't God either. <laughs> I'm not God. I can't make that call. <laughs> I ain't God either. You know what I'm saying? You look at His the thoughts, most... not my thoughts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You look at you look at what the most high God say, he'll tell you straight up. If you don't do what I'm saying, you ain't my son. You ain't my child. God, let me tell you, God clean that thing up for us. He gonna cover himself no matter how you do it. Grab uh, John, we ain't even supposed to be getting this, but you know I love I love reading this one. First John chapter three. But I just don't want nobody to like, you know, sometimes on you on YouTube. And then you like, you know what I'm saying? You see a video on this one that just pop up on the side. You know what I'm saying? They might, who knows what this video is going to be named. You know what I'm saying? They might see the name and be like, oh, let me look at that. Then they hear me running my mouth right here. And they be like, oh, yeah, you know he lying. Everybody God, child. So I need to be able to prove it to people and be like, no, no, no. This ain't me talking. This is the book. This is the book. You know what I'm saying? We really weren't even supposed to get this. But you know, I love this thing. This is 1 John chapter 3. Give me about verse 6. It's easy money. Mess these Christians up with this darn. This, this, put, this part of the book? Mess they darn butts up. I had a girl tell me, I don't like that. Ooh, I've never read that before. I don't like it. And that, I mean, she the most honest of the Christians I've heard of. The other one be like, nah, nah, see, nah, 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 nah. That's, see, now, First John, bro, that's a confusing she book not, there. <laughs> I mean, like, this the most clear book I've seen in the book. She's not even Christian. She, like, mess with the, like, Jewish, like, synagogue. She a Christian. Yeah. Might as well be. Might as well be. She a Christian. This uh first John chapter three. Give me verse six. What does the book say? Whosoever abides in him sins not. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. Clear. It's nothing more clear in this book than you're gonna find. I mean, we got parables, we got simile, we got all types of stuff in this book. Let me tell you something. When John was right. He's like, let me just lay this thing out. Let me just clarify this thing. If you sin, you don't abide in man. Right? If you don't sin, you do abide in him. Right? Let me tell you something. If you did sin, you ain't never seen him, nor have you ever known the man. Let, I mean, let's just lay it out there before we even get too deep. Let's just make sure we have that understanding before we go. All right, keep telling us, John. Now you done broke our spirits. You know what I'm saying? We broke it down now. It's like, all right. You know what I'm saying? I know where I stand with God. Let's hear more. Whosoever abides in him sins not. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. Uh huh. Little children, let no man deceive you. 
He that does righteousness is righteous. So mm-hmm. now he further claimed that was already very clear. You know what I'm saying? If you sin, you never known the man. Right? If you abide the man, you never sin. Right? Let's just, I mean, let's just lay it out. Let's understand what's going on. Then, after that clarity, he tried to get even more clear. Let me explain to you. If you, what do you say? Those, Those who do what? Those who do righteousness is righteous. He said, let me just make it plain for you. If a person does righteousness, guess what? They're righteous. Just like who? You say, even as? Uh, little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Right? Even as Yahushua is righteous. Right? So he said, if you follow after what Yahushua is telling you, that's righteous. Just like he was righteous. What's next? He that commits sin is of the devil. He, he that commits sin is of what? The devil. So God make it very clear to you. If you commit sin, you're not of me. But just in case people didn't get that from that, watch what John keep on saying. For the devil sins from the beginning. Uh huh. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the purpose of the Son was to destroy the works of the devil. Okay, I can rock with that. What's next? Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. So if you are born of God, meaning a child of God, you don't commit sin. But for his seed remains in him. Uh huh. And he cannot sin because it's because he is born of God. Books say you cannot sin because you you're a child of God. Okay. What else? In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. The children of who? God are manifest. In the and, children of who? And the children of the devil. I got that. So God make it very clear to you. Oh, if you my child, that means you're born of me. And if you're born of me, well, you can't sin. Right? It's not even an option. So now it put us in a predicament when we sin. Now we guess what we got to say if we want to be our, If we want to agree with the book, guess what I got to say? I never knew. I never knew, man. I'm a child of who? The devil. That ain't hurt at that point, right? You, I mean, you've been a Christian all your darn life. You've been standing up, jumping up, feeling God come over you. The pastor laid hands on you, you fell out, and you wasn't even playing. Like, you seen people fall out, you was like, man, they probably joking. You know what I'm saying? They probably just playing. Pastor put his hands on you, you really fell out, and it was like, I really felt something. So you just knew you was a child of God. Then you read that, and the truth come over you, and you got to deal with it. And you're like, you know what? That book, what am I going to do? Argue with him? That's book. I'm a child of the devil. Now you, God can work with you at that point. God can work with you at that point. God was like, okay, now I can deal with it. Right now, I can work with you. You know the ones he can't work with? No, no, no. See, that don't mean what it means. You misunderstanding this. John is only talking to a particular group of people. See, the context and this, that, that's the ones he can't work. What are you going to do with that? You just can't, you just rewrote everything that you just read. And it still say what it said before you rewrote it. But in your brain, you change everything that you did. How you going to, how you going to, how can you teach a person like that? What you going to do with them? They can change the rules every time. They ain't, they ain't even going to feel a certain way about it. But if you can admit, if you can humble yourself before God and say, I'm not anything. I don't even know you. Right? That's what the parable meant when he said there was two, uh, I think two Pharisees or two people. You know what I'm saying? One is a Pharisee and he looked up to God and says, thank you for making me as righteous as I am. And the other one was like, man, I can't even look at you. He had his faith down to the ground. He said, I can't even look at you. That's what that parable means. It's one person saying, man, I'm not nothing. I don't even know you. Everything that I did in my past is done. I It's nothing. I don't even know you. Right? Well, now I can work with you, young fellow. That don't mean you spend the rest of your life saying, I don't know him. I can't look at him. That means that you start at that point, you obey his word, and now you can walk in confidence of the Most High God giving him the honor. Right? Let's go back where we were. Numbers 14, 9. It's Numbers chapter 14, verse 9. Right? We got all these people telling us we can't do it. Most of our God already told us we could. Same thing that's happening now in, in the wilderness. They tell them, you can't, we can't take this land. These people too big. Most of our God already told us we, we going to have the land. He already promised it to us. So what are we going to do? Turn around and go to Egypt? That's crazy. Right? 
Joshua and Caleb over there tripping. They like, man, what is y'all doing? We right here. They believe that thing. They like, man, we are right here. Y'all about to mess it up for us now? Let's hear about it. I can't wait till we get to what happened. But all the congregation bade stone them with stone. They did what? The congregation bade stone them with stone. When they say bade, I mean they are getting ready to stone. They bust with stones. Well, you got to imagine the scene. You got, you got, you got probably over a million people, right? All congregating. You know what I'm saying? Staying together. Then you got leaders of those million people coming together. You know what I'm saying? All of the the, the people of note. You know what I'm saying? Talking. In that midst, you got about three, four, maybe, you know what I'm saying, at the most, 70 fellas. You know what I'm saying? That's like, yo, we can do this. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else, like, eh, either having doubts or they firm and saying, no, we can't. Right? Then you got all these people flipping out like, man, this, that, another. These boys like, man, look, we about to take our butts back to Egypt. Because remember, in their minds, this is life or death. Y'all about to have us go across these borders and fight these people when we all about to die. My children are right here. My wife is right here. And y'all about to get us all killed. That's how they looking at Moses. So for them, it was like for death. They looking like, no, 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 no. Y'all about to be able to get out the way. I'm about to go ahead and get this stone. And y'all about to get hit. So they bathed the stone. They about to stone them. Watch this. But all the congregation. Grab, grab, watch this. Grab John 11 for me. That thing familiar for us. This is John chapter 11, verse 1. It's John chapter 11, verse 1. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, uh -huh. the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was, that Ma it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Uh -huh. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou love is sick. And when Yahushua heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Uh -huh. That the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So what do we see here? Lazarus about to die. Right? Sister sent on to Yahushua. And they said, look, man, the man that you love, you know what I'm saying? Like, your boy, he's sick. And we know you got the power to save him. Did Yahushua hear him? Yeah. He heard him. He, he got the message. Watch this. Now, Yahshua loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He said he loved who? Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He said, I loved all three of them. But watch what he do. First, I mean, you love somebody, they're about to die. What we doing? I mean, we, we don't have the power to stop them from dying, right? But if we love somebody and they're about to die, what are we about to do? Start crying. Start crying? What else we going to do? Freaking out, praying. Freaking out, praying? What else? They across town. What we going to do? Rush over there. We going right to them, fast as we can. Oh, you in reach? I can get to you? Oh, I'm going right to you fast as I can. Watch what y'all sure do. This is a man who do have the power to stop it from happening. Watch this. Now y'all sure loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. <laughs> the man said, when he heard, you know what he did? Ah, let's just relax two more days, guys. Hmm. I'm telling, look, these people don't know y'all sure. These people like to run their mouth and say they know them. I guarantee you, if a man of God today behaves like Yahushua, they'll kill his butt. They'll kill his butt. Right? It's too confusing for people. You love the man. You have the power to bring. You've been, you've been walking around doing miracles, bringing people back, making people well when they sick, healing the blind. You've been doing all this stuff. You think Martha and Mary didn't know that? That's why they wrote to him like, look. Uh, our brother, you know, you love us. You know what I'm saying? He's sick. Y'all should like, no, don't worry about it. It's not on the death. Right? It's not, it's not on the death. Then you know what I, I was like, let's just, I mean, let's just spend two more days. I mean, I know he's sick. Right after that, right? Ain't that what he said? He heard it. He got the message. Right after that, he said, I don't know, guys. Let's just spend two more days. Right? Let's see. Keep going. Then after that, 
says he unto his disciples, let us go into Judah again. <laughs> now, where where was Lazarus at? In Judah. No, he was in Bethany. Yeah, that's in Judah. Right? He's not saying, he's not saying let's go to Judah as in let's go to Bethany. He said, let's go down to Judah and let's go to the feast. Watch this. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou there again? Right? He said, you gonna go to where the Jews want to stone your butt? Why they want to stone y'all for sure? Because he was talking that stuff last time. He said, drink, uh, drink his blood. And yeah, he said, I am. My flesh. I am. Yeah, he said, I am. And, and the Father and I are one. Mm -hmm. Right? They look at him like, you darn crazy. I'm going to stone your butt. Same way they're looking at uh, Yahushua, the son of Nun. Joshua, the son of Nun. Same way they're looking at Caleb. Same way they're looking at Moses. Same way they're looking at Aaron. Or they're looking at him like, y'all butt's crazy. We going to stone your butt. Right? Because for them, it was life or death. You think it was any different for the Jews? It was life or death. Uh, jump down to maybe verse uh, 47. This is John 11, verse 47. Then a gathered the chief priests and Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man does many miracles. Right? They talking about Yahweh Shua. They like, man, what are we going to do? Because he do a lot of miracles. Right? What else? If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Now, so notice, see what their concern was. Their concern was... If we let these people believe that he he really is doing miracles, right? If we let these people believe that he is the one, guess what the Romans going to do? Take our place in the nation. The Romans going to come down here and they going to shut all this down. If we get to talking about, hey, this is our king, this, that, and the other, Caesar going to send some folks down here and he going to shut all this down. So for them, guess what? It was life or death. They thought, Listen, these people mess around really think Yahushua is the Messiah. Remember, they honestly did not believe he was the Messiah. They are like, this, this just don't fit. I mean, sure, he's doing miracles, but that's just witchcraft, right? They are like, listen, the Romans going to come and shut all this down. So for them, preservation is this. And one of them named Caiaphas being the high priest that same year said unto them, ye know nothing at all. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Right? He said it's appropriate for us that we let this man die. That way, the whole nation will be preserved. So that's what they're thinking. Right? I guarantee you people wouldn't be thinking no different today. Guarantee. You wouldn't be thinking no different today. You see it all the time. Right? You see it all the time. Somebody get doing something wild, you know what I'm saying? You turn these people against them real quick. Like, no, no, I get their butts up out of there. You know what I'm saying? You're talking too crazy. You're talking too crazy. You know what I'm saying? Let somebody let somebody go against somebody they like. You know what I'm saying? Go against somebody like uh who who's somebody they like. You gotta go against one of these Democrats. You know what I'm saying? These people like the Democrats. You know what I'm saying? You go against one of these Democrats, they gonna get your butt up out of here. What you talking about? Like, no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? They don't play that stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's how it was then. It was like, no, no, no. It's life or death for us. We're going to stone your butt. Let's go back to Numbers. It's Numbers chapter 14, verse 10. It's so hot. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in the of the congregation before the ch all the children of Israel. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? Uh, Most High God talking now. He said, how long are they going to provoke me? How long are they going to err? Right? How long are they going to make errors? Right? Let's see. For all the signs which I have showed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto the Lord. Watch how, watch how Moses try to appeal to the Most High God. Let's see this. And Moses said unto the Lord. Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou brought, broughtest up the people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud stands over them, 
and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because Yahuwah was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. All right? So what Moses tried to do is he just didn't like, Moses like God told him straight up, this is what I'm going to do. Moses was like, mm, yeah, but let's think about this, God. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you mess around and do this, it's going to hurt your reputation. Right? You see that it didn't stop Moses. Even though God spoke, that was his word, it didn't stop Moses from communicating with God. We have to be the same way, right? Just because just because it's in the book, just because that can't stop it. It's a couple times you'll see God, he say, don't even pray for them. Right? He'd say, he'd say it real clear. He's like, I'm going to do this to them. Don't even pray for them. Who would tell that? Jeremiah? Was it Jeremiah he said, don't pray for them? Uh, or was it Daniel? No, it had to be it Jeremiah. Daniel. Or Ezekiel, maybe. That'd be Jeremiah or Ezekiel. Yeah, I forgot. He said, "Don't play for, don't pray for these people. Leave me alone that I might consume them." I don't remember. There yeah, was, I want Jeremiah. I want to say, I want to say it was Jeremiah or Ezekiel, one of them. But you know what I'm saying? He he tell you very clearly. Don't even pray for him. You know what I'm saying? Don't even pray for him. Cause that that's what he said. I ain't trying to hear your reasoning. I made my decision. This thing done. Don't even kill no time. Right? But as long as the Most High God don't tell us that. We got to be disputed, especially yeah. standing in the gap for our people. I think he told, uh, who was the, he said, even if Samuel, Moses, and Daniel was before me, I'd That was Ezekiel, him. I want to say. Okay. Yeah, when he told Ezekiel. You know what I'm saying? But uh, we look at it, we look, we look at this thing, and it it, it provides for us a, a, a context that, that's valuable for us, right? Just like how people dealt with God and how God responds to the way people are dealing with it. Moses is persistent. Moses ain't giving up. Right? Moses wasn't like, Moses wasn't like, uh, well, that didn't work. All right, whatever. Right? Moses persistent. Like, oh, take it easy, God. You see all these times, Moses, each time, is in the people's face. Like, listen, this is what we got to do, this, that, another. And then he and God, they like, listen, maybe you should take it easy on him, this, that, another. Sometimes God listens to him, sometimes don't. But Moses stay consistent with what he's doing. Right? Keep going. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. All right? You see Moses put that book on him. Yeah, yeah, he's his word against him. Yeah, he's like, yeah, God, you remember, you do remember when you said you were merciful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You do remember that, don't you? All right? That's what we look at. Most high God was like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Look, watch, watch how you respond. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy, as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. Look at the Most High God said, All right. All right? Moses got done with this field. Most High God said, All right. I'll pardon. Just like you told me to. Right? He answered his prayer. Right? He said, yeah, I'll pardon. Just like you told him to. But you know, most like God always got a plan. No, Watch no, this. Man. He always <laughs> got a plan. There's always a little caveat there. These people don't know God. I'll be, like, I'll be listening to people talk sometimes. I'll just be like, I don't even entertain these conversations. These people do not know God. Oh, God. I mean, God, I forgive you of this. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will. He'll, he'll definitely forgive you of that thing. Don't nobody get by, though. No, by, by no means, books say by no means clearing the guilty. So yeah, he'll forgive you, but you're not getting cleared of your guilt, right? Not like that at least. You go, you still going to have to die. You do realize that though, right? Like the punishment of sin is what? Yeah. Is there anybody that's going to get out of here without dying? Your butt's still going to have to die. You're still going to pay for it, right? Nobody gets by, right? Watch this, keep going. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have te tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. He said tempt me now how many times? These ten times. That thing real scary. You know, good most I got keeping the count on your butt. And at no point, we've been reading this whole book, right, so far. We read, we've read through all of the book up until this point. 
right? At no time did we ever say, God was like, this is time five. You tempted me five times. All right, now you hit six. Now you just come out of this with nowhere. This ten times you didn't tempt me. He been sitting there keeping a count on their butt. Like, okay, that's one. I ain't gonna say nothing. You know, you know, some parents they be like, they look at the kid. You stuck up. One, two, three. Right? You know, you know what I'm saying? Be like, okay. Then they get up after that three and they go get their butt. Or not. Right? Usually you got a smart kid, they gonna stop right after that. Right after you say three and you start to get up, be like, okay, I'm done. And the parent leave them alone. You know what I'm saying? They just start to figure out where they can get away with it. That's why you ain't supposed to do that counting stuff. That's why most like God don't do what I imagine. Right? He ain't counting out loud. He just watching. Mm-hmm. 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 Ah! Then get that butt without you even knowing it. You do that, the kid can't pick it up. He can't, he can't plan out, okay, I know when she gets to that three, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my butt whooped. You know what I'm saying? When he, when he yelled, don't do that three times, I know that's his breaking point. The kids start to pick up on that stuff. That's why y'all see me get my boys? I don't say, no, I just be chilling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just be watching them. They're all out of nowhere. They're bow. They'll never see it. I don't want them to see it coming. I want them to always have that fear. Just like, oh, that thing can happen the first time I do it or it could happen the last time. It just depends on if he saw it or not. You'll never know if I saw it. I see it all. Right? That's how you got to see it in their mind. Right? That's how the kid pick up. They got to pick up. They try to plan out. You think these kids, all they do is learn. That's all they do. They don't have nothing else. They got empty darn brains. And all they're trying to do is figure it out. Just fill them things up with everything. Everything they're doing is learning. Right? So when you do that type of stuff, you're teaching them. That's why the most high guy, he kept that thing quiet. Ain't nobody know he had counted. At the end of it, he said, 10 times you did that. And watch what happens. Ain't no more warnings. Right? And have not hearkened to my voice. Uh -huh. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. Mm -hmm. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land where into he went, and his seed shall possess it. Right? He said, he said, what did he say? Go back. Go back a little bit for me. But my servant Caleb, because no, he had... Go a, back. Oh. Surely they shall not see the land. He said, surely they shall not what? See the land which I swear unto their fathers. He just there and told. He said, these ten times you provoke me. Oh, and guess what? Oh, no, they forgiven Moses. But guess what they not going to see? They ain't going to see the land. They run their mouth. They want to go back to Egypt. All right. Y'all not going to see the land, though. Y'all not going to see the land. Everybody else going to see it. Y'all not going to see it. Watch what he said. Keep going. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went and his seed shall possess it. He said, Caleb going to see it and this seed going to see it. What up? Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow I'll turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said unto Aaron. In other words, what he just said, the, Am the Amalekites is over there. In other words, what he just told them, turn around, don't go against them. Like, or, or, at first, our route was about to send us right up against them. He is like, don't even, don't even worry about it. Y'all turn your butts, go, go the opposite way. Right? He tell them, don't even worry about it. We're going opposite. We're going back into the wilderness now. Y'all got to get to running your mouth. Don't even worry about it. We're going the other way now. Watch this. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? Mm -hmm. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, See, I word. Lord. He heard it when they were crying out to him. Took them a while to react, didn't it? He heard them the whole time they were running their darn mouth too. Took them a while to react. Right? The, God, the most I got is just. Right? A lot of times we want God to move every time we, when we want something. Right? For him to be just, and what's going to happen every time we uh, do something wrong? Same way. We wouldn't like that thing too much. He give us a little leeway on this side. Well, you got to give, give me a little leeway with your prayer now. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I want to wait a little bit. Maybe I need two more days. Right? Let me, let me go to this town first before I go there. Right? No, I hear you cry. I know you sick. Right? I know you on the deathbed. Don't worry. I know. Maybe, maybe I got something else to do. Or are you gonna stay consistent through it though? Right? That's what we looking for with the Most High God. He's just looking for consistency, and we looking for Him to be consistent. He gonna be consistent. He gonna hold up His end of the deal. Do we trust Him though? Can we stay consistent? Keep going. Watch this. I love this chapter. 
I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, says the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Mm -hmm. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you. Remember when they said, he was like, Oh, I wish, I mean, we might as well just die in the wilderness. Right? Remember they said that just now? He said, As sure as your mouth just said, that's exactly what I'm going to do to your butt. He said, Your carcass going to do what? Fall in his wilderness. And all that we numbered, and all that we numbered of you, according to your whole number from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. You remember when we were talking about the number last week? They numbered from twenty years up. And why? Why we say they did that? To go to war. To go to war. We said we are the people of war. You know the most like God said. Every one of y'all that got numbered, except for Caleb, and and except for uh, Joshua, every one of y'all got that got numbered. Y'all butts gonna die right here. All the young kids, watch it, he'll tell you, watch it. Doubtless, you shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. So you remember when they were crying, they like, we got our wives, and we got our kids, and they gonna get killed. Remember they were doing all that crying? Most of God said, oh, the ones that you said that were gonna get killed? Oh, they're going to they see the land. Y'all butts ain't going to see it. Y'all butts going to die in the wilderness right here. Right here, right now. Y'all going to die in the wilderness. The kids, they're going to see the land. And they're going to possess it. And they're going to enjoy it. Y'all butts going to die right here, though. See, you're playing with God. All right, watch this. Keep going. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. Uh -huh. And your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. He said, I'm going to wait. I'm a, you know what, Moses, you right. You know what, Moses? <laughs> you right, Moses. I ain't about to kill him. That, I mean, that would just be wrong, Moses. You right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait 40 years. They but going to die off on their own. Don't worry. We'll spread that thing out over 40 years, Moses. Right? We look at that thing. We heard God say, you, were, you know what, Moses? It part just according to your word. We heard that. And we were like, oh, Moses was like, oh, thank you. God started laying that thing out. Moses was like, oh, crap. Right? Bro, like, imagine if you was 20. That means you died at 60 no matter what. That thing done. Like, you, you ain't even going to get too old. That thing done. That thing done. Everybody in there died. And, and might have died sooner. People was living to like one something back then. Right? He might have died sooner because we gonna, we gonna read through. There's a whole lot of plagues, a whole lot of stuff. From this point on, there's a whole lot of stuff that went out and got our butts. Most of God was like, ah, yeah, you need to go now. Right? A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff started hitting and getting our butts out there. We gonna read it. Watch it, keep going. Relax. After the number of the days in which you searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities. Even 40 years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Right? So he said, when they remember when they searched out the uh, the land, they went up there for 40 days. So they were looking out for 40 days trying to figure out what was in the land. And so he said, for each day that you search it out, I'm going to give you about a year. So for 40 years, they stayed in the wilderness. That's where that 40 years in the wilderness came from because they went 40 days to search out the land. And they came back with an evil report, discouraged the people. So he said, okay, now I'm going to give you 40 years in the wilderness until everybody dies. And he's going to make everybody that was numbered in, in the uh, first chapter of Numbers, everybody that was numbered got to die in that in that that 40-year period. All right? And they're going to die multiple ways. I'm sure some die from natural causes, but a lot of people die from plagues and God getting their butt throughout that 40-year period. And we'll talk a little bit more about it as we go on. Keep going. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Mm -hmm. And the men which Moses sent to search out the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, Watch it. even those men that did bring up evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. Right? The one that brought back, the ten that brought back that evil report, they but die right there. They didn't get 40 years. But God said, let's just go ahead and get some of this started right now. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and clean some of this stuff up right now. Boom. Got their butt right away. What else? But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. Uh-huh. And Moses told these sayings unto the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. 
And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo. So now Moses let them know. Moses was like, Look, I tried to talk to God for y'all. And I got some good news and bad news. <laughs> good news is y'all ain't going to all die today. You know what I'm saying? Bad news is y'all definitely not going to see the land but y'all kids is. So the people start crying. The book says the people mourn. The people was like, oh, right, it's bad news. Right? We messed up. Watch what happens. And just when you read this, just kind of say, eh, I'm, I've done the same thing. I'll be doing the same thing. Right? Watch this. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and we will go up unto the place which the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Look at that. They come back. They all extra righteous now. <sighs> We've sinned. You're right, Moses. We'll go up. We'll fight the giants. We believe now. Right? What is the most I got? Just tell them to do, though. Turn around. Turn, turn y'all butts around. The Malachite day over there, don't even worry about it. Turn y'all butts around. Go to the Red Sea. Now, all of a sudden, they, no, 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 we can do it. We, we've seen our error. Let's do it. Let's go up against the Malachites. Right? Let's see what Moses tells us. And Moses said, why now do you transgress the commandment of the Lord? Like Moses, I got just turned, told your butt to turn around. Now all of a sudden, now you you got it going on. You can go up there. You're not scared no more. He like, why now? Y'all could have did this yesterday. We'd have been good. Why now? All right, let's hear about it. But it shall not prosper. He is like, y'all gonna lose. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not spitten before your enemies. Mm -hmm. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword. Because you are turned away from the Lord, therefore the Lord will not be with you. Mm -hmm. But they presume to go up unto the top, to the hilltop. Oh, that means they went. When they say presume to go up, they, that means they took their butt up there anyway. It's what it really <laughs> saying. They took their butt, they, they hard-headed butt, took their butt up there anyway. And let's see what happens. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came Moses down. Said, I ain't got no part in that fool. I just told y'all what was going to happen. I ain't got no part in that foolishness. You better not take that Ark up there with them. Moses said, you better keep that darn Ark right here. I ain't got no part in that fool. That's crazy. Watch this. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill and smote them and discomfited them even to Hor Hormah. In other words, they kicked their butt all the way back down, the, back into the wilderness. Right? Kick they darn butts. Most like God told me it wasn't going to prosper. I told your butt to turn around. Right? That's what happens when we, you know what I'm saying, we uh, grab a, uh, Ecclesiastes 7 for me. Talk about being too righteous. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 7. about verse 13. Consider, consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he had made crooked? Uh -huh. In the day of prosperity, be joyful, but in the day of adversity, consider. Right? That's how we have to look at stuff. Man, when things is going good for us and God is rocking and our prayer getting answered, things moving, he is like, man, be, be, be happy, be joyful. Right? Enjoy that thing. You know what I'm saying? That's good. But in the day of adversary, ad, ad, adversity, you know what I'm saying? He said, consider. Pay attention. That's when we mess up. When stuff gets all rough, we're not paying attention. We just, I mean, we focusing on way too much. We're not paying attention. What is God trying to say? What is this for? What do I need to learn? What do I need to get? What do I need to focus on? What is this teaching? Me? How patient do I need to be in? Because there's always something there. The Most High God, the whole exercise of going through the wilderness, all of it meant something. Like every exercise means something. He's trying to take us through something. There's some plan behind it. We is in Egypt. We had no idea that we was there for the Amorites. He was just waiting until the Amorites sinned enough to get their butts up out of there. We had no idea. Okay, Amorites ready. Time for y'all to go. We going through the wilderness. We have no idea what he about to do to these people. Right? The route that he took us, he took us straight there. Straight there. Then we get there, we start acting up because we get scared. Now we spend 40 years in the wilderness. 
40 years. When all we had to do is just go straight there, we'd have been there in two years. We'd have had the land, been there going. Now we had to add 38 years to that time span because of our foolishness. Right? We don't know the most high God plan. You know what I'm saying? The, he, he, on, he on a whole other plan and we have no idea what's going on and don't have the patience to figure it out. Don't have the patience to wait until he rebuilt it. So we get to moving too fast and making decisions that's not based off of wisdom, not based off of the book, and end up being sin for us. Right? It's no different. He's saying, man, in the day of adversity, your butt need to sit down and consider. Think. Think about stuff. Right? It's getting tough. It get hard. Think about it. That's your time to think. Figure it out. Right? In the book. Right? Figure it out. See what, see what you can learn. This is going to be valuable time for us. All right? Keep going. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. Mm -hmm. There is a just man that perishes in his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And there is a wicked man that prolongs his life in his wickedness. Mm -hmm. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Right? So he said, be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. In other words, he said, don't be trying too hard. Right? That's what the children of Israel, that's what they're doing at that point. They, they got themselves caught up in sin, and they went back and they were like, okay... We'll do it. We saw our error. Right? And trying to fake righteous. They are trying too hard. Just do what the most high God say. Why you gotta do extra? Why are you trying to why are you gonna go against his word to think you're doing you scoring extra points? That's not what he told you to do. Relax. Right? What's another example in the book that we talk about every now and again? Somebody trying a little too hard. Alright, what about Martha and Mary? They're sitting, they're sitting at, at the Most High God's feet. Right? Mary sat at his feet. You know what I'm saying? To learn to hear the word. What was Martha doing? Cleaning and cooking. Yeah, cleaning and cooking, trying to serve everybody, trying to make sure everybody's good. On the surface, that don't look bad. Right? Surface, that thing don't look bad at all. Right? But when, when Yahushua spoke about it, guess what he said? He said, Mary's sitting here doing the needful. Right? Mary's sitting here doing what she needed to do. Martha, you over there, you being a busybody. You just too much going on. You're not getting it. Right? We can't be trying to do too much. We just got to get what we need, learn, figure it out, and then let the Most High God give us the next step. And our step going to be at different paces and all that, but don't let yourself be comfortable with just going at, at some slow pace either. Push yourself. Do it. Make sure you, you get what the Most High God got for you. You know what I'm saying? People tell you, don't, don't, don't compare your walk to everybody else's walk. What book you reading? How Paul tell us? To run the race if this one is going to win. He told Paul said, look at this thing as if only one person going to be saved. And you got to run as if you trying to be that one person. You know what that means? I got to be better than everybody else. You say that, I mean, that thing feel, that thing feel, oh, I can't believe he just said, I say that in the Christian church, I can't believe he I have to serve God better than everybody else. Oh, I can't believe he just said that. You know how you serve God better than everybody else? Outserve people. Right? Give more, love better, right? That's how you out, that's how you serve God better than everybody else. Right? That's what he's looking for. Just don't try to overdo it by trying to do more than what the man told you to do. The man told you to do it, you get that part. And don't don't leave out a part that you get to do something else. Right? Just learn the book, take your time with it, figure it out, and then make moves. Keep going. Why should you destroy yourself? Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why should you die before your time? Uh huh. It is good that you should take hold of this. Yes, also from this withdraw not your hand. For he that fears God shall come forth to them all. Wisdom strengthens the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. Mm -hmm. For there is not a just man upon the earth that does good and sins not. Also, take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest you hear your servant curse you. All right. For oftentimes also your own heart knows that you yourself likewise has, has cursed, cursed others. All right. In other words, what Ecclesiastes tell it, take it easy. Let some of this stuff slide. Just let some of it slide. I have, sometimes I'll be having to tell, tell my co-worker this. I'd be like, listen, let some of this stuff slide. Y'all all uptight about everything somebody's saying. Everybody, you want to try to 
just let some of this stuff slide. Like, you know you do the same thing. You know you have been in your heart and you said something and wanted to say something to somebody. They just slipped and said it to you. Let that stuff slide. Right? That stuff would drive you mad trying to trying to correct every little thing that everybody doing. I think, man, no, nah, you just got to let some of this stuff. Let the, what do you think the Most High God was doing? He count ten times. Did he address each ten? Some of that stuff sliding. We got a point system at work, right? We got a point system. If you absent one day, you know what I'm saying, you get ten points. If you get up to 40 points, then we put you on a verbal warning, right? So a lot of times, people, you know what I'm saying, say they, they legitimately sick, like, lo, like legit sick, got doctor note and everything. They come back to me and be like, am I going to get the points I brought in the doctor's note? And so I tell them, well, you was out of the office. According to the policy, you get, you know what I'm saying, these 10 points. That's how I work. I know, but I have a doctor note. I really was sick. If I, if I wasn't sick, I would have been here. So what I always tell them is, you know what? That thing ain't going to matter. You think I'm thinking about these 10 points? Nobody think about these 10 points. You know what? I'm going to start thinking about it if it happens again. And it happens again. And it happens again. And you get a verbal. Right? That's when somebody thinking about it. This 10 points, unless you somebody who are going to be sick all the time or sick all the time, you don't even have nothing to worry about. Right? That's how I explain it. And guess what? The people that got something to worry about have an issue with that. The ones that don't know that makes sense. Right? Because it's not habitual. You can let that stuff slide. Right? It's still it's still counting. It's still on record. I ain't gonna say nothing to you. I ain't gonna be, hey, don't you be absent again. I ain't got nothing to say about it. That stuff gonna slide. And then guess what? The most high God in the background, he counts. Because if you somebody who got to get, you know, get them points all the way up, oh, you're gonna be dealt with anyway. Most high God gonna talk to you. Right? Same thing with these people. If people you you know, just count, count that stuff in your head. You ain't got to go on bothering people. People make mistakes. That's all right. Let that stuff slide. Let it slide. You count and you keep it counting your head. You know what I'm saying? These people mess up too many times. Then you address them. But you let people make a mistake. You know what I'm saying? They, they going to make it. You know what I'm saying? That's how it go. Then support them. Help them fix it. You know what I'm saying? These people that's not in our group especially. These people that are not, you know what I'm saying, not walking with the most high God. I ain't, ain't wasting no time on these people. Let these people do what they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? Let that thing slide. Read that thing again. I love that verse. I forgot that thing was even there. Also, take no heed unto all words that are spoken. In other words, I'm going to try to translate the thing for you. In other words, don't be paying attention to what these people talking about all the time. Right? What else? Unless you hear your servant curse you. You mess around eavesdropping on all these darn conversations, you will hear them say something bad about your butt. Right? What else? For oftentimes also thine own heart knows that you that you yourself likewise have cursed others. Right? Stop fronting. You know that you be feeling the same way about other people sometimes. You probably just said the same thing if somebody eavesdropped on you. Keep going. All this have I proved by wisdom, I said. I will be wise, but it was far from me. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? I apply my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even the foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is in snares, is snares, and nets, and her hands are as bands. Whoso pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. All right, sinner gonna end up being taken by that woman. All right, let's go back. Let's go. Uh, let's go to. Uh, uh, matter of fact, give me Matthew chapter five. Give me Matthew chapter five, verse thirty-three. We finish chapter 14? Yeah. Yeah. It's Matthew chapter 5. We'll get up out of here. Again, ye have heard that it has been said by them of old time, You shall not forswear thyself, but perform unto the Lord your oaths. Uh huh. But I say to you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, mm -hmm. nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, mm -hmm. neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Mm -hmm. Neither shall you swear by the head, because by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. All right, but, grab, grab Matthew 6. That's not what I wanted. Grab Matthew chapter 6. Six verse what? Verse 1, sorry. 
Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Right? That's what it, you know what I'm saying? That's what it comes down to, trying to be too righteous. Trying to do too darn much. Right? You give, you give, and you want everybody to see you giving something. When they say alms, that's what it's talking about. It's talking about when you like giving a gift or giving something to somebody, usually to the poor or something like that. You know what I'm saying? You say, you know, give your alms in front of everybody. Why don't you just do that thing privately? Or you go and then keep it pushing. You ain't got to go tell, oh, well, you know, I fed the hungry, you know, this week. And, uh, you know, that but I, that ain't nothing nobody's business. You ain't got to tell these people that stuff. They got a, uh, man, great. Great got a video out, you know what I'm saying? He got the nerd to call that thing God's plan. You know what I'm saying? He called the song, God's a nice song, though. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? He called that thing God's plan. So what? The whole video, you know what I'm saying? The whole video, get what he's doing the whole time. Handing out money and big old checks to people. Made a whole video. It's a big music video. Him handing out money and checks to people. He ain't got no respect. He ain't get no respect from God. That wasn't God's plan. You know what I'm He don't get no respect from God. Read that thing. This thing talking to Drake right now. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father which is in heaven. Mm-hmm. That's the only, only reason I even say something about it. Because he called it God's plan. Right? And now people arguing over like, oh, I think it should be done. It shows people that it's cool to give and this, that, and other, da, da, da. No. What it show people is that you can look cool. Right? He got his reward. He got his reward. Right? By using that stuff as promotion. If you're going to give something to somebody, you let somebody else tell it. Right? Most of all, I got to let that thing, he'll give it to you. He'll give you the notoriety and stuff if he wants you to. You let somebody else tell it, though. You just do it, you know what I'm saying? If somebody happened to tell it, let the people go up and say, hey, look, you know what? This is how good Terrence is. He invited me. He invited me into his house, right? He let me He let me eat with him. He let me shower in his house, right? That's a good brother, right? You let other people say it. What am I going to say it for? For what? Like, seriously, when you think about it, for what? What are you looking for? You looking for somebody to praise you? You looking for somebody to say, you know what? Terrence, you good. Thanks for telling me what you did. For what? What we looking for, it got to come from God. Otherwise, most high God say you got to choose one. If you looking for it to come from people, I'll let it come from people. You ain't getting nothing from me, though. If you looking for it to come from me, don't worry about people. And guess what? You'll mess around and get both. People will praise you because they'll find out for it, and I'll, I'll praise you. And I'll raise you up. When he raises up, that's what the purpose is. So people will look at us and be like, ah. But God got to do it. They don't do that stuff in front of people. Watch it. Keep going. Therefore, when thou does thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets. Right? He said, don't sound a trumpet. Everybody, womp, womp, womp. I'm about to give money to the poor. Womp, 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 womp. Here you go, poor man. Here you go, poor. What do you think? What do you think is in that song with Drake got? I guarantee there's some trumpets in there. Right? God's plan. You know what I'm saying? He is going out doing that thing. Big old smile on the thing. Giving these black people. It's black, all black folks too. All these people take advantage of the black man. All of them. They make these black movies and all this stuff. They do all this stuff because they know we in a place of like disarray. And, and we trying to find identity and black power and all this stuff. They take right on advantage and make millions of dollars off of that thing. Which, you know, gift and curse, whatever. It come with it, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like... You can see right through all this stuff. At least I can. You can see right through all this stuff. No, man, I don't listen to these people. I don't follow after these people. These people don't know our stuff. Keep going. And in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Mm -hmm. But when thou does alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Mm -hmm. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which, is, which sees in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. All right? And when these people pray, guess what? They want to pray. That's why before we pray, guess what's going to happen? Camera got to get cut off. All right? Camera going to have to get cut off. We ain't about to see here and pray in front of no camera. That's crazy. All right? If you hear, you hear. You know what I'm saying? If you're not here, then you'll never know. All right? Sound like some horn barn. You got your, your your key? That thing might be going off. It sound like a horn. 
Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't want to be praying just so people can see you pray and all that stuff. That's stuff crazy. Now, if a camera happened to be on, that's fine. But just don't you contribute to it. Right? Don't you, there's no way that I'm going to leave the camera on purposely so we can see pray. Now, if somebody, y'all got a camera phone or something and leave that on, that, that's, yeah, that's y'all stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't mean that, no, I'm not going to pray because the camera's on. Right? That's silly. Right? You don't want to do that. But you don't want to, you don't want to do anything for the purpose of people to see it. Now, that's bad. Y'all don't even know. Yeah, you, you know how people be like, you know what I'm saying? I'm praying for you. You see, rarely I say that. And if I do say it, I'm saying it personally. You ain't about to see that on Facebook and all that. I'm praying for you and all that. No. I pray, I'm praying for y'all constantly. Constantly praying for y'all. Right? It ain't got no business. Why? I'm going to tell you why. So that you make me feel better because you know it. I'm going to pray for you. When it happens, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to rejoice privately too. Right? Keep going. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, Baby, which see is in see secret, pray? shall reward thee openly. My wife don't even see me pray. It's a hard tell you, though. He'll find me right over here. And he'll come pray with me sometimes, some mornings. Because he wake up early like I do. Or I'll walk around the dark house. I don't even pray in front of her. That thing, that, I take that thing serious. There's no reason to. It's like, what, what I'm going to do? I'm going to look righteous to my wife? <laughs> she better know I'm righteous On an accident she better know That's how that thing happens It's just like our, our mindset has to be different from these people Otherwise it's little things like this Like there's a reason why he's saying all this stuff And he's putting it all in one place I've fallen victim to some of this stuff before But I had to learn from it like wait a minute What am I doing this for Right? What am I doing? It don't even make me feel right. Like it feels like ugh, icky afterwards. Like you know what I'm saying? I feel like a real. Thing. Yeah, like you know a... what I'm saying? These people look at you, and it's like, and it's sinners that are looking. You know, I'm sinners looking at you and praising. You're like, I know it's for the wrong reason now. I don't even want no. I don't. I don't even want no sinners saying. I that thing made me uncomfortable when sinners say good stuff about. Me. I feel like make you feel like a buster. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? Like what you talking about? <laughs> you supposed to hate me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What you mean? But not be preaching. You going to hell. I mean, you just want to tell him you going to hell. Say something mean to me right now. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. You just, you just got to live, live that thing the way God got it for you. You know what I'm saying? Don't accept nothing from these people. You just, you know what I'm saying? You just want to, you want to line that thing up the way God. Did. And guess what? After that, the Most High God still gonna make these people bow down to you in the end. All right, yeah, let these people say what they want. Let these people think what they want. You got no time to be trying to argue and defend your honor. Most High God defend you in due time. That thing is right. It's right that you don't get defended. When was the last time you defended God? You spent your whole life just letting God just get trampled over. You trampling over with other people. Right? It's all right if you don't get defended a couple times. It's all right, it's all right if you look like an idiot. You look, you look crazy to these people. You think these people think I look sane? These people think I'm crazy. Think I'm an idiot. You believe in the Bible still? It's been proven that that's written by man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just as stupid as can be. Y'all ain't never known me to be stupid. Y'all ain't never, none, none of my friends ever known me to, if they say a whole lot of stuff about me, they ain't never known me to just make some rash, crazy decision. All of a sudden now, oh, yeah, okay. Y'all use y'all brain then. Keep going. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. Mm -hmm. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. I appreciate the most I do. But when, well, when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. What they used to do in your church, baby? What? When they used to pray in the Catholic church. Huh? They used to sit and kneel. They used to say the same thing over and over. Yeah. What they used to use to say it. The Father. But what they used to do. What else they get that? They have anything in their hand. The what they? How that thing work? Just explain it to me. I just want to understand it. There's a number of beads, mm -hmm. and the number of beads tells you, hey. or kind of lets you know what, how many Hail Marys to say and how many Our Fathers to say. So I say like one Hail Mary, and then what I do with a bead. People are crazy. That's crazy. That thing is right there in the book, though. Catholics too easy. <laughs> they, they way too easy. You know, I ain't, I ain't feel. I ain't feel. I be like, yeah, <laughs> I ain't want to talk about that. Catholics don't yeah, Catholics. Catholics. Yeah. <laughs> but Everybody know Catholics are extremely non-biblical. What's crazy? Yeah, that's the biggest one. Yeah. That's the biggest religion. It's crazy. It's insane, though. 
Right, but literally, it's right here in the book. And guess what they doing? Just like, just exactly what the books don't do. They got a B sitting there repeating themselves. Keep going. Be not therefore like unto them, for your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. Before you even open up your darn mouth, I know what you're talking about. That's why I told y'all, just be honest with the man. Why you gonna come up to him fronting and acting like you know what I'm saying? Oh, well, Lord, uh, I just want my enemies to prosper. If you feel that good, that, I mean, if you really, if that's really in your heart, I'm not saying that's wrong. That's good. That's that's perfect, right? If you really have that in your heart, that's perfection. That's what God is calling perfect. That's good. And I'm not saying that you can't be that way. I'm just saying that that's not how you feel. Tell the most high God how you feel. I want to knock him out. If it wasn't because, of, if it wasn't for your word, Lord, I'd hit him in his mouth. Tell him. He'll deal with you. You'll be all right. He can work with that, though. Tell him, you know what? God, I looked at your word. I feel like I've known you this whole time, but I sinned yesterday. And honestly, I feel like I know you. I feel like I feel like I did some valuable stuff in my life. But your word's in here telling me I'm a child of the devil. And that makes me feel a certain way. Right? Tell him, you know what, God? Last year, we was rocking. Everything was kind of going, you know what I'm saying? I felt like you was answering my prayers. This last year, though, God, I haven't heard from you. It feels like I'm praying, I'm praying, and nothing's happening. And I feel a certain way. I'm not feeling this right now. Like, just tell them. If you do that, I guarantee the most I got to deal with you. You do that with obedience. I guarantee the most I got to deal with you. You do that with hypocrisy and you just going your own way. You killing time. Don't even pray. You know what I'm saying? Just do what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? But you do that with obedience, you stay consistent with his word, most I gotta deal with you. And you want that. You want him to deal with you. Because every time he does, he exposing something that you didn't know was there. That's the only way we get into the kingdom, is that everything is exposed and we can stand in the light. If we still got little stuff in, in the shadows and all that stuff, then we don't know what's in them shadows. Right? Everything gotta be exposed. We gotta be able to stand in the light and just be good. Gotta be blameless. Alright? Keep going. See if we can wrap this thing up. What's it going to get into? Our Father who art in heaven? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read it. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, O Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forget our, forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. for if We're going to talk about fasting. Uh, for if you give, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Mm -hmm. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Mm -hmm. Moreover, when you fast, be not as hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their they disfigure said, their faces. Notice what he said. He said, "Man, notice when you when you start fasting, don't be like the darn hypocrites, right? Walk around moping." That's why when I fast, I take my butt in the darn house. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I can't do it. I'll be, I'll be out there. I'll be having an attitude. I'll be out fast at work once. I had an attitude. I was like, look. y'all, And I never got an attitude. I'm always cool, patient. I was at work. I was like, look, you got to leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? That bad be beat my butt. You know what I'm saying? That's why I take my butt in the house. I only fast when I'm off work. You know what I'm saying? I take off some days. I fast. You know what I'm saying? Be like, all right. You know what I'm saying? That way I can just mope with my wife. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't do that thing in the streets. Not yet. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to be out there moping around most I got. You know what I'm saying? Look at that and be like, man, you just did that all for nothing. No, you know what I'm saying? I sit in my house and be mean to my kids. You know what I'm saying? Get away me, boy. You know what I'm saying? That thing be messing me up sometimes. But that thing could. That's how God work with you. Right? Then you grow you in that thing. Every time I fast, it just get easier and easier. Right? You got to grow. My mom be fat. I don't know how you do that. Danielle did seven days? That's why I preach. Danielle, Danielle, she came here. She came here talking about, we didn't know what. We looking at her. We looking at Danielle like, goodness gracious. You know what I mean? Danielle looking all good, looking white. You know what I mean? I'm looking like, all right. You know what I'm saying? She walking the thing like, all right. Boom. She's like, oh, yeah. I've been, you know, this is my sixth day on a fast. But you never know. That's how that thing's supposed to be. I appreciate that. That's how it's supposed to be. Look at him. He's going to tell you. Watch this. And tell me this ain't what Danielle did. Watch this. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their did faces. Did Daniel come in here sad? 
No. What nothing sad about she is a happy little she ain't never been happier. Oh let me give you two hugs. Man, roll some of that on me. Right, let me see. Keep going. That they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Mm -hmm. But what thou, did he tell her to do? When thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. You don't think she washed her face? You don't think she put some, some oil or some, some, some lotion or whatever on her face? That's what anointing is. I guarantee you she did. She came here glowing. Looking like, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Keep going. That thou appear not to men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. If she, if she didn't say it, we would have never knew. I'd have never darn guessed it. I didn't know. Right? That's righteousness to the Most High God. That's how we get results from the Most High God. We got to make sure that our stuff line up. Not just, I mean, not just line up like, mm, okay, I stop cussing. I don't be cussing no more. I mean, that's good. That's good to stop cussing. But where you at with everything, though? That whole, like, we can't just do like, all right, I got this part down. You know what I'm saying? God, give me some credit. You know how God looking at your junk when you got this part down? You still filthy in my eyes. I want you to line the whole thing up. Just everything just lined up. And until you get there, be in communication. Cry out to the man. You think the Egyptians was, was righteous? I mean, not the Egyptians. You think the Israelites, when we was in Egypt, you think we was righteous? We were sinners. We were worshiping the Egyptian God, doing all types of inappropriate stuff. But guess what? The Most High God heard our cry, though. Right? Being, don't let nothing stop you from talking to the Most High God. Even if you think he ain't listening. He might not be listening. He might be slapping your junk down. He might be sitting there whacking, whacking, I ain't listening to your butt. You still a sinner. He might be. But then again, he might be hearing you cry. Until you get all that thing together, just talk. Figure it out. And then keep obeying. Keep getting better. Keep shaving all this sin off. Eventually you'll get there. Eventually we'll be, we'll be in the same spot. All of us. Serving the most high God. And the kingdom. Right? Whole world going to have to come to who? The temple. They all going to have to come to the man. Everybody going to have to come to the man and learn. Who going to get by? Nobody gets by. We just want to be in a position where we can win with them. Right? That's all we got. This thing may take a long time. I mean, I like to, I like to believe I live to at least 60. But that means I got 30 more years. 30 more years I got to be righteous. I got to live right. Right? That's a long time. A lot of us, we live right for two darn weeks and we feel like ain't nothing changed. <laughs> I don't, I'm not, I felt that way. Every now and again, I feel like, I'd be like, man, I feel, shh, God, I'm going on a couple years now, right? God, I mean, I just feel like, I mean, something should happen over here. And I don't even want no material thing. I don't be like, like I don't even be asking for like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like me to get, you know what I'm saying? Like this type of car or this type. I ain't even in my mind. Like even the house, like I appreciate the most I got. But I'm not even, that's not even like the type of stuff I'm asking for. You know what I'm asking for? God, just send us a prophet. Send us a man of God. Send us a man of God that can take us further. You know what I'm saying? That can do more. You know what I'm saying? But that's always my prayer. Send us a, a man that's more righteous, more wise, that, that's more eloquent, that, that'll be able to just take us a little bit further. That'll gather a little bit more people so that we can be, get together and really start to do this. That'll be able to teach the people the stuff that I don't know. I don't know the calendar. You know what I'm saying? When these people be laying out, you know what I'm saying, the feast days, I don't trust none of these people's feast days. I don't know Hebrew. These people, you know what I'm saying? People offer to teach me Hebrew. I'm like, man, I don't trust that stuff. Send, send a man of God that know the Hebrew, know the real language. Send a man of God that, that, that you know what I'm saying, that, that can stand and be like, you know what? I can prove out the calendar. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen nobody able to do it. I don't trust it. Maybe they're doing it and I just don't get it. Huh? I just don't trust it. I can't prove it out with the book. If I can't prove it out with the book, I'm going, eh. yeah, it's all in the air for me. You know what I'm saying? That'd be my prayer, and I'd be like, man, God, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, I ain't stood up there and tall, and I ain't, I ain't been righteous, and you still ain't sent nobody. You know what I'm saying? How much longer I got to do for the rest of your darn life, boy? Do you think you're being righteous for a prophet to come? That's crazy. Right? When I get honest with the most I got, he deal with that in me. You know, boy, that's crazy. That don't make no darn sense. 
I just think it to myself. It's like, damn, I made no dog. What am I talking about? Okay, got that. Let's move. All right? See y'all next week. That's how I go. You know what I'm saying? Let's move. Let's keep doing it. It's the rest of my darn life. If he decides something different, thank God. If he don't, then guess what? Thank God. Where we at? No, Matthew 6? Yeah. Let's go ahead and get up out of here. Any, any questions? All right, let's pray out.